What up, it's your buddy Mark. I just said I was done making videos for tonight. Um, just, I don't know, my Kindle's at 6%, so I'm really hoping I get this though, dying. But I just saw, uh, Vlad's got Lord Jamar on, just, this is just part one. Uh, supposedly it came out four hours ago, and we gotta cover it. That's how, that's how I got started, was, uh, the two of them got so under my skin that I had to, I wanted to voice my opinion somewhere higher than fucking Facebook, and, but I've been having so much fun just covering old songs, I don't wanna go, I almost don't wanna go back to this, but unfortunately it's my, mo it's my most watched video. So I almost have to. I gotta. I gotta cover this. I gotta. So let's get to these fucking assholes. I, I almost hit. I almost hit stop on the record. Get it play. Lad, you went almost the whole month without having Jamar on. Good job. Keeping it fresh. What's good? A lot of things are good. Yeah. A whole lot of things are good in the world right now. Okay. And we have a lot of topics to cover. But we have to talk about the elephant in the room first. Oh. <laughs> now, now, now. God damn it. Let the record reflect. Whatever we're about to talk about, you're bringing this up. See, he's finally starting to catch on that Vlad has been using Jamar like a fucking puppet. He's been getting him to say what he wants him to say. And that's why Jamar's saying, all right, we're going to talk about it. You're bringing it up. You, not me. And me. <laughs> My idea. This is all me. Yep. Vlad, you fucking... Blame. Don't really look like prick. I'm good with that. Right. Okay. So to just kind of give the overall story. Back in 2013, you and I started a conversation about white rappers in general being guests in the house of hip hop. Yes, we did. Over time, thought over the next was a year or so. <laughs> I thought it was a harmless conversation, but go ahead. And before we even started doing interviews, I had an interview from before saying I felt like a guest in the house of hip hop, and I'm Which very I had happy no to idea be a about, guest. never heard of found that after the fact but anyway go ahead right so once you started that. that narrative i agreed with it over time eminem became part of that conversation as a guest in the house of hip-hop well no I, 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 how he became a part of the conversation is you said <laughs> again eminem he's pointing to i'm like yeah I, again jamar is pointing out you brought up eminem not me and then what happened from then jamar goes on a rant but eminem Vlad sees all the views. He says, yo, I got something here. And he's been making Jamar look like a... He's been using Jamar ever since. And Jamar, you're smarter than this. Tell Vlad, go fuck yourself. I'll make my own channel and whatever. Eminem too. Like all of them. Eminem, Beastie Boys, Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin. All of them. He's a producer. All of them. All a lot of white producers. Over time, many rappers have kind of chimed in on this topic. Like Schoolboy Q... Um, uh, Feral Munch from Organized Confusion, uh, Royce the Five Nine, lots of different people. Yellow Wolf, the list goes on and on. Because a lot of times in my interviews, I would incorporate this question. And get yes, up. Vlad, and you can't do an interview now without bringing up Eminem and what they think about. Oh, did you hear Eminem um, dissed Lord Jamar and blah blah blah? I'm gonna play an interview that one rapper was like who. I don't know who that is. I don't know who you're talking about. Like, Vlad, it wasn't like a big deal. No one, no one really gives a fuck about Lord Jamar anymore. Like, he made good music thirty music thirty years ago. Interesting answer. So this yeah, kind of kept point, going. Incorporating it a little too much, but whatever. He's uh, Jamar <laughs> saying it's been too much talk about Eminem. So then, to just hopefully kind of he smartens up and uh, leaves Eminem Vlad. Dropped Kamikaze. And he responded to you about being a guest in the house of hip hop and saying, I belong this. here, a clown, and, you know, start naming all the people that he brought in, like 50 Cent and, and so forth. Not and only the people he brought in, the people he inspired, the Logics, the Hopskins, the 
I forget who else, but he named off a bunch of them. And he said, and I, and I brought the road 50 cent. So I said, well, what have you done? You sat on the couch and piss and moan. You haven't done shit for hip hop. You haven't brought up any new talent. You haven't, you know, you haven't gone and said, oh, this kid's got talent. Let me work with them and make them better. You haven't done nothing. You haven't done anything except piss and moan, just like he said. And that inspired some some great people and a lot of corny crazy people but anyway in his new album he responded to you again a little a little one line death if hip hop was a house then really G rap and rock him would have you mopping floors and so forth mm-hmm. he said rock him and, and run DMC everyone pretty much thought that was the end of that well, then he also went over to Abu Dhabi and, and got on the right. mic and said some shit about me in between those two things. In, in, in between, exactly. Uh, although he didn't really address the House of Hip Hop in that particular. No, uh, but he just addressed his disdain for Lord dis- Jamal. Disdain for yeah. Lord Jamal. Uh-huh. Just who so, could like you? Just recently, a friend of mine, Crooked Eye, who's collaborated mm. with Eminem a lot. In Slaughterhouse, as well as on Eminem solo projects, uh, did a an interview with Eminem, and in the interview, he did. When did that happen? Are you fucking kidding me? Everyone fucking knows about the interview, Vlad. He asked how Eminem feels about white rappers being a guest in the House of Hip Hop. So Eminem responded. He said, with the whole beef of a certain person, right? You. you were quick to say my name on a diss track, but now when you admit this shit, you don't want to say my name. But go ahead. <laughs> You're not he scared said, to say it. I never said respect. I wasn't a guest. I'm absolutely a guest. Right. And there you have it, seven years later. Right, so why why were we going through this in the first place? Yeah, why? Yeah. Why, Vlad? Why are we going through this? Like I said to the whole Crooked Eye interview, what did you expect him to say? Yeah, I've sold the most records. Um, I'm the best in hip-hop. No one can go and say that. No one can say they're the best. Like, you know, like, you just can't. You sound, you sound like a cocky asshole. He had to be humble. I don't know how he kept a straight face. Like, even though I sold the most records, it doesn't make me the best. Like, that'd be hard to say without, like, smirking a little bit. Like, because that's got to have something to do with it. You can't sold the most and suck. And you got to be at least top 10. You got to at least, at least give them that. You said you weren't, but you never said you were until now. He's never been asked. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> this could have been ended a long time ago. Like, like, like. Not that it's even anything like, like, I don't even feel like, you know, like he even used the word beef in there. Like, this was no beef. Like, this was just me stating my fucking opinion. And so a you being a bitter old man, nothing else to do. It. And then them, you know, amplifying some shit so much back to him that he had to respond. Like, like, really the stands, I feel, are responsible for a lot of this fucking back and forth shit like you know uh, what I, guess mean? That's I hear the shit that they say to me he hears the shit that they say to him and it just fucking conflates the whole fucking shit you and know what I mean? Vlad but makes it at bigger at the end of the day this was no real beef or whatever and and, and all my points were proven you know what I mean um, I don't uh, take this as any personal victory or anything like this this is actually yeah. you know I said this on my show this just speaks to the power of the soil, okay? I represent the voice of the soil of hip hop. <laughs> Meaning, you know, you can plant many seeds in the soil, but the soil decides what grows, okay? It's not the Whatever seed you that say, decides, bro. it's the soil that decides. <laughs> it's like, I don't even know how to get this guy when he started talking about shit like this. Wearing skirts in hip hop, which was the controversial I'm, I'm thing against before that. <laughs> the guest in <laughs> the house hip hop thing. I, as one of the representatives of the soil, said, absolutely not. We're not going to allow that to grow. Get that the fuck out of here. <laughs> and what happened? We're not wearing skirts right now. Right. And that's actually how the Lord Jamar Vlad TV relationship started. It was mm. with an interview back in 2013. Right. About Kanye wearing a skirt. Right. 
And which was a of, one and done. Right. And he wore it once, and then he never wore it again. Right. And, and and it was done immediately. Not only did he stop wearing skirts after that, he he requested that um, what's that big uh photo site that you um Getty Getty, Getty he request requested that Getty Images take down all images of him <laughs> in a skirt. Okay. Well, yeah, Number one, he dislodged him all, but we know he hurt me. Okay, because I had conversations with close people to him and all of that type of shit during that time. Really? Okay, I didn't know about this part. So oh, what were the what was the feedback that you were getting back from Kanye through someone else? Well, I didn't have a, a direct Kanye. I don't feedback, really like Kanye but I was either. Talking to Even when I had some people songs like, Brian I like. Fest, people like that, you know, just basically stating my opinion and and after talking with grown men, you know, it was understand. It was understood. I don't like it either. Dudes wearing skirts. I'll never be down with it. Or you know, like you know. Or rappers wearing skirts. Transvestites, they do their own thing. Um, but I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't get it. And we went away from it. But I know that those people are close enough to him to go back and tell him what I said and blah, 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 blah. No one you know cares what, I mean? what you and say. He came out of his face, yo, fuck Lord Jamar, you know, he's a nobody and all this other shit. He just took the shit and probably reflected and was like, you know what, he's right. You know what I mean? He is one of these soil, speaking for the soil type motherfuckers. That's what people like about me because I say the shit that a lot of people will not fucking say. And that's this is racist. Representative of how the soil. All right, how are you having me over? We got another minute. Okay, so we're not going to always go with the, you know, the politically correct shit. That comes from other places. You know what I mean? When we talk about the soil of hip hop, that's why I said Sorry, we're the good. ones who decide who the goats are. You know what I mean? Not record sales, mm. not how fast you could rap. Or the not how fast you rap, I agree with. If you are the goat. That's all my shit was. It was mm. never a personal thing against Eminem. If anything, okay. it's a fuck you to, you know, white supremacy. Because I'm in here. And Jamar, will you shut the fuck up now? Eminem said, yes, I'm a guest in hip-hop. Are you happy, Jamar? Will you shut the fuck up now? Please? Please? And Vlad, stop asking everybody else about how they feel about it and try to suck other people into it. If you two could both just stop making interviews and shit tomorrow, even though it would probably hurt me as a YouTuber, I would not give a fuck. I'd be happy. Um... So, <laughs> I don't mean that in the night so negatively, but negative, negative, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say, negatively, but, um, have, have a good night, um, I'll see you tomorrow.